Hello, this uh, is a video lesson for those of you who missed class on Thursday, September 24th. And our learning target was, we can review what we learned about perspective last year and apply it to two familiar stories. So first of all, let's look back at some of the work we did on perspective when you were in sixth grade. Here we go. When you were in sixth grade, we did an activity called You Be the Principal. And we were an imaginary principal in an imaginary school where um, two students, Justin and Max, got in a fight in the cafeteria at lunch. So as the principal, the principal wasn't there when the fight happened, but it's the principal's job to decide who is gonna get suspended for the fight. So the principal had to listen to all the different people who witnessed the fight. There was Max's friend, Eric. There was the English teacher who has both boys in her class. There was Justin's dad. There was this girl, Jamie, who just happens to know both boys, but not really well. There was a cafeteria worker. There was Max's girlfriend. And there was uh, just some random other witness, I think. And then there was Max's mom. Now, the interesting thing about this is that although none of these people were lying, none of them were lying, they were all telling the truth, they all told a very, very different story. They all had a different point of view. And so another word that we use for point of view is perspective. The interesting thing about perspective is it's not quite fact and it's not quite opinion. It's kind of a combination of the two. There's one fact in front of us. Justin and Max had a fight. But people believe different things about that fight, like whose fault it was, who started it, who really started it. And they believe different things because they have different points of view, different perspectives. Another example that we talked about in class I don't have a slide for this, but I'll just tell you is, let's say that one person is allergic to peanuts, really allergic, like they could get really, really sick if they accidentally ate something with peanuts in it. And there's a second person who loves peanut butter and peanut butter is their favorite food and they would eat it all day long if they could. So you've got two people one who's allergic to peanuts, one who loves peanut butter, and then you've got one peanut butter sandwich. Fact, it is a peanut butter sandwich, but one of those perspectives will see it as very dangerous, and one of those perspectives will see it as very delicious. It's a fact for each person. They have different perspectives, different points of view. So in our class on Thursday, we talked about lots of examples like that when um, there's one fact, but lots of different perspectives around it. And then we looked at two stories, um, two different stories about the same characters and the same basic plot, which is the three little pigs. Now, some of us have heard both of these stories before. Most of us in class today had only heard one of these stories before, the first one, the Three Little Pigs one, and all of us couldn't remember the stories very well. So I'm going to give you a review of the Three Little Pigs to start. Okay, the traditional Three Little Pigs story, and I'm going to use uh, pictures from the Disney one because what can I say? I'm a fan of Disney. That's my perspective. All right. So in this story, there are three little pigs. This first pig um, built 
their house out of straw because it was an easy and fun way to build a house. And then this second pig built their house out of sticks because it was, you know, a little, not as easy as straw, but you know, pretty easy still. And the third pig built his house out of bricks, which took a long time and was a lot of hard work. Well, there's a villain in this story too. There's an antagonist, a bad guy, and the antagonist, the bad guy, as some of you probably already know, is the big bad wolf. Wolves love to eat farm animals, especially pigs. So in the story, this big bad wolf comes along and just blows down the straw house of the first little pig. Now, in some versions of the story, the wolf then eats that little pig. In the Disney version, that little pig runs over to his buddy's house and they hide in the house of sticks. But it's no good because the big bad wolf blows down that house of sticks, too. And then they both run to their brother's house, the brick house, which took him a long time to build, but might be a little safer from a wolf. Well, sure enough, those two other pigs run to the brother's house and the wolf sure does try to blow that house down, but bricks are big and strong and that wolf cannot blow that house down no matter how hard he tries. So the big bad wolf climbs onto the roof, slides down the chimney. Some houses have a chimney. My house doesn't have a chimney. The apartments I've lived in haven't had chimneys either, but some houses do and uh, this house does. And so the big bad wolf slides down that chimney and he lands right in a pot of boiling hot water on the fire and hurts his little wolf behind. So the wolf runs away crying and embarrassed and is gonna not bother these pigs anymore. And the three little pigs live happily ever after. And that is basically the story. Um, maybe you've heard it before, maybe not. It's a pretty typical kind of fairy tale where you've got a really clear good guy is the little pigs and then a really clear bad guy, the big bad wolf. And um, that's the story I always knew. That was the single story that I always knew. But today um, we looked at another story about the three little pigs. And this one is not told from the pig's perspective. This one is told from the wolf's perspective. So um, what I'd like you to do now is um, click over to the next video or scroll down to the next video. It is a read aloud of the true story of the three little pigs. And after you watch that, um, there will be some discussion questions for you to answer. All right, thank you. I will see you over on the next video.